Dear learners, good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for joining the live class with me in week nine. So in this week, we are going to discuss about a play, George Barnard. We need to know the biography of the writer, I mean of the dramatist. So me, Faslame, as usual, with you. Faculty member, Department of English, Wall University of Bangladesh. So let's begin. I hope you all are well. So first of all, we will know some facts about George Barnard Shaw, the dramatist of the play, St. John, which is supposed to be discussed this evening. Okay. So George Bernard Shaw, one of Ireland's notable literary icons, born on July 26, 1856 in Dublin, the capital city of Ireland, and died on November 2nd, 1950, at St. Lawrence, Hertfordshire, England. So he died in England and born in Ireland, okay? He's an Irish playwright and dramatist. Irish comic dramatist, literary critic, and socialist propagandist. I mean, he was also a politician as well. Winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1925. Okay, so he got the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1925. So he is a Nobel laureate dramatist. So now you're gonna know top 10 facts about George Barnard Shaw that you never knew. George Barnard Shaw wasn't fond of his name, so he changed it in later life. Despite being born George Barnard Shaw in 1856, the Anglo-Irish wordsmith war, later dropped his Christian name and became known simply as Barnard Shaw. That means he deducted the Christian uh, for name George from his name, as he did not like it. It is said that his distaste for the name George traces back to his childhood and that as far his wishes it went unused by those outside of his family. Second fact about George Barnard Shaw is he was a vegetarian when or before it was trendy. Though Shaw's decision to become a vegetarian was initially believed to have been influenced by the poverty he suffered whilst living in London as a young man, his decision was later confirmed an ethical one instead of economical. His favorite recipes have since been immortalized by Alice Ladin and R.J. Mine in the George Barnard Show Vegetarian Cookbook, 1972. Third fact about George Barnard Show, he sought to reform the alphabet, his very own version I mean, the Irish alphabet. One of the most interesting facts about George Barnard Shaw is that he has a version of the alphabet named after him, known as the Shavian alphabet or Shaw alphabet. So the adjective of his name is Shavian. Okay, Shavian, that means of Barnard Shaw or Shaw alphabet. Unwilling to conform to the English alphabet's rules regarding spelling and punctuation. He set about creating a new, more precise phonetic version consisting of a minimum of 40 letters. Shaw was so determined for it to succeed that he left money in his will to fund its creation. Next fact. He wrote more than 60 plays, more than 60 plays, including St. John, okay? A prolific writer. Shaw's impressive body of work spanned multiple decades with his creations, notably satirical in nature, 
addressing many social issues of the time, like politics, religion, privilege, etc. He is best known for penning or writing Major Barbara, published in 1905, Pygmalion 1912, and Saint Joan, which we are supposed to discuss today, published in 1923. Next fact. His works were initially deemed to be failures, and failure breeds success for him. Despite his large volume of works, Shaw's success was an instant. In fact, a number of his early features, namely his five novels, were refused by many publishers. Shaw eventually turned his attention toward other avenues, such as writing plays. So he first tried novels, then he tried plays, okay? Why didn't he found greater success? However, said early writings were later published with some com coming post posthumously, I mean, after his death. Next fact, he took a turn as a polemicist, orator and political activist, politically minded. Another interesting fact about George Barnard Shaw is that he championed several prevalent issues, including gender equality, I mean social issues, gender equality, women's rights, and fairer treatment of the working class people. During his time as a political, that means he was a socialist reformer, orator, or like public speaker, political activist as well and fair treatment. So during his time as a political figure in England, Shaw served on the London City Council. He also joined the newly founded Fabian Society in 18, founded in 1884 and drafted their first manifesto. Next fact, fact about Barnard Shaw, he was a controversial figure, controversial figures. I mean, debate, debatable. Not everyone's cup of tea, or not everyone's like Alongside opposing vaccinations and organized religion, he actively advocated for eugenics. Further, he was vocal in admiration for the political figures Stalin, Mussolini, and Hitler. Shaw also condemned all parties involved in the First World War and held strong opinions regarding British policy in Ireland. Next fact, he worked as a ghostwriter, critic, and columnist, multi-talented person. One of Shaw's earliest jobs entailed ghostwriting, that means writing for other people, for a musical column in the weekly satirical publication, Title The Hornet. Later, he ghost wrote a similar column for the star as Cornu the Bassett. He also worked as an art critic for the world as GBS and served as a theater critic for the Saturday Review. He had an aversion or hatred towards public honors, declined a number of offers. Shaw frequently rebuffed a multiple, multitude of honors throughout his lifetime. Though unsuccessfully in declining the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1925, he saw that his monetary award was used to fund the translation of Swedish books into English. And despite refusing the Order of Merit in 1946, he accepted the honorary freedom of the city of Dublin that same year.
So he was recipient of a Nobel Prize and an Academy Award, first person to do so. Do so. Arguably the most impressive of our facts about George Barnard show is that he was the first ever person to receive both a Nobel Prize and an Oscar. He earned an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay for the film adaptation of his play, Pygmalion, in 1939, okay? So his screenplay was adapted from his play or drama, Pygmalion. For, for this, he got the first, he was the first person to go to Oscar, as well as he got the Nobel Prize. The work also later became a musical that found fame both on the stage and the screen. And there you have then 10 facts about George Barnes show. You probably never knew, okay? So now we're gonna go through the summary of our selected play, St. John, written by the prolific, one of the Irish icons, literary icons, George Barnard Show. Okay. So St. John is a female character or protagonist of the drama. Then who was And who was actually leading the French army, okay? During the Hundred Years' War. So he was a female general, female general of an army, okay? So, and warrior, slight warrior, Saint John, and also supported or facilitated, facilitated by God. Okay, that's why God or Goddess, okay? So she, was celebrated as a saint figure, saint figure in whole Europe, especially in France. Okay, so this is this drama is based on a real story about John, Saint John. Okay, so this figure is Saint John, uh, who actually existed in real life during 1929, between 1929 and 1431. Okay, so this place place set on that historical period when the real Saint John lived, okay? So the play is set between 1429 and 1431 with an epilogue set in 1456. During this time, the Hundred Years War, this Hundred Years War was raging between England and France. And English forces had occupied a number of French cities and towns. The play begins with Joan asking a French nobleman who is called Robert de Baudricourt to provide her with armor, I mean the dress used in war, armor, a horse and soldiers to lead the army in French battle. I mean the battle between France and England. Okay. Joan is an adolescent. Adolescent means age between 13 to 19, okay? Joan is an adolescent girl from a small country village, but she has had visions of saints, okay? That means holy visions, holy godly visions, which is like some foretelling, okay? From the heaven. So she, was guided by God and also by angel. That was believed during that period. So Joan is an adolescent girl from a small country village, but she has had visions of saints telling her that it is her destiny to lead French forces or French army to victory and ensure that the Dauphin or the would-be king of France, okay? head to the throne of France, is officially crowned as king. Robert is hesitant to support Joan, but he gives in when he sees that she is capable of inspiring men to fight for her and for France. Okay, French independence against England. Joan travels to Chinon. Okay, a place in France where the Dauphin, the would-be king of France, has set up an informal court 
despite an attempt to trick her, she easily identifies the disguised would be King Dauphin, which further encourages others to see her as guided by God. Joan persuades the Dauphin that she is going to free the city of Orleans, another city of France, held under siege by English forces or English army, and have him crowned at Reims Cathedral, a charge. Leading troops, Joan goes to Orleans, a city of France, where the French forces are frustrated initially, but they need the winds to change so that they can sail up river and attack the English from behind. Joan prays to God and the wind immediately changes, allowing the French forces to win a triumphant victory against English army. <coughs> So already we have known that the drama, the plot of the drama Saint Joan is about an oil between France and England, okay, and the French independence. And the French army, one or one fraction of French army was led by this lady Saint Joan, great lady Saint Joan, who is celebrated as saint in France. The French Victoria at Orleans changes the tide of the war, which worries English leaders. Earlier in the war, the English had formed an alliance with the Burgundians, a French faction who opposed the royal house to which Charles belonged. Fire Week, an English nobleman, meets with Colson, a Burgundian bishop. Both men agree that Joan is dangerous and must be eliminated. Meanwhile, Charles has been crowned at Reims Cathedral. Joan is worried because she seems to be becoming unpopular and several people accuse her to being proud. Joan is worried because she seems to be becoming up unpopular and several people accuse her of being proud, stubborn and reckless. With Charles' crown, Joan wants to lead forces to try to take back Paris, but no one supports this plan. Nonetheless, Joan insists that she has to follow God's orders. The action of the play then jumps ahead two years to 1431. In the interim, Joan has, Joan has been captured by Burgundian forces, I mean English forces, and sold to the English. She is now on trial on charges of heresy with a number of charge officials questioning her. Undaunted, Joan defends her decision to wear men's clothes. And she insists that her voices are truly the voices of divine messengers or angels from heaven or God. She only wavers when she is threatened with execution. Okay. So he was threatened with execution because he, though he was, a, she was a female, but she wore male's dress and also participated in a, in a watch. Okay, that was her fault. So the English people, English people, I mean English bishop, father in the church, and other officials, okay, charged him for charge him of this guilt, guiltiness, and then they threatened with execution. At which time Joan signs a confession and a recantation. However, she is horrified to realize that even though her life will be spared she is still going to be imprisoned for life. Faced with his fate, Joan tears up her confession. She is immediately taken out to be executed. Other characters report that she showed great strength and courage during her painful execution. I mean, he was 
burned alive. That was the system of execution during that period. And guilty of, I mean, religious guilty. He, he was found of religious guilty. The epilogue to the play is set 25 years later. An inquiry has been held into John's trial and the charges have been reversed. John is now declared innocent after her death or her execution or the second of murder. Her spirit appears in a vision to Charles, who is now successfully ruling as a strong French king. The pair are now, the pair are joined by many other characters showing that Joan has now been vindicated and that her enemies have been proven wrong. Eventually, a man dressed in 1920s style clothing appears and announces that Joan has been declared a saint. Excited by all of the seeming praise and recognition, Joan suggests that maybe she should return to life. However, all of her seeming allies immediately abandon her, making excuses for why this is not a good idea. At the end of the play, Joan is left alone, wondering when the world will be ready to fully embrace her as a saint and a great leader for France or French independence. So that's the end of, the, of today's lecture or live class. Okay, thank you very much for being with me. So you'll get to know more about this drama next week, I mean, next class. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.